Guruji, what is your, how it all began? I would like to ask you, uh, the life God is worshipping and teaching Tantra, you are a nuclear scientist. So, what, what, what was it that uh, you tend to began it? You felt like that. It started with meditation. Uh, I used to hear the sound of Anahata when I was very young. And I lost that after some time. And again, when I was about 47, I was working in Tata Institute as a scientist. Again, I started uh, meditating because I used to get experiences when I was hearing that sound when I was young. As a youngster, I used to feel that if I stop hearing that sound, I'll die. I don't know why that feeling was there, but that feeling was there. And I checked whether that the sound is there inside or not. So I started meditating. And as I started meditating, usually in the night, because during the entire day I would be working in the office, come back in the night. At two o'clock I used to get up usually and I sit on the bed with my eyes sleeping next to me and start meditating. Yeah, I, I checked and it was there. I just focused on that sound. It was going on and for after some time I lost myself. First day nothing happened. Second day nothing happened. Third day something started happening. Suddenly, I felt unconscious. I lost my awareness of myself. And an explosion was there in my heart. It was as if, you know, my body would be thrown in bits and pieces to enter the galaxies. Then like a bomb burst in, inside my heart. Then I started wondering. And at that time, after the flash of light, in the flash of light, I saw a screen, and on the screen were some ten lines written on that. Before I could read the first half of the first line of that thing, the screen vanished. I could remember the first part. That Isha was sim idam sarvam. That is in Sanskrit. Isha was sim idam sarvam. My God is pervaded the whole world. That's what it means. And I started wondering, look, if an explosion is going to happen inside of me, what's going to happen to my wife? What is going to happen to my children if I die? If I can be killed in meditation? Well, I don't think I'll continue with that. They left off, stopped the meditation. After a few days, my scientific curiosity about what happened came back and said, yes, it is true that I had uh, an explosion in my heart, but then I did not die, did I? I'm continuing as I am. So, let me try once more. And I started doing that. At that time, uh, another strange feeling has started happening. The little tingling in the, at the base of the spine, Something was moving up and I felt a pleasure like having sex in a little while later. And then it was, a, I experienced heat in the spine near the navel center. And as it came here, it was something like 400 cycles uh, sound, continuous sound which you hear. And then as it traveled up further, the sound increased in, in volume and uh, it became a roar like a volcano. At that time, I experienced that uh, I was sitting on top of a volcano and I was being pushed out of myself with great force. And I had uh, decided, look, I'm not able to contain this. I'm being pushed out of myself. What is this force that's doing this? 
Then I prayed to uh, Goddess Saraswati, whom I always loved, right from my childhood. Saraswati Namastabhyam Varade Kamarupani Vidyarambham Karishyame Siddhar Pavat Mesada Padma Patta Visharakshi Padma Kesar Varnini Nityam Padmalaya Devi Samam Pad Saraswati. Then I saw Saraswati in my vision. I told her, please, something is happening, please rescue me at this place. Then she said, I'm giving you an experience, take it, don't worry. What to experience? I'm dying and you're <laughs> saying it's an experience. And she said, don't worry, continue with the experience. These things will mellow down as you go further. Initially, a lot of blockages will be there. When this current flows up, it meets this block and breaks them, breaks them through. At that time, you will have this violent uh, experiences. But as you continue doing that, they will mellow down, they will burn out and you will get back into tranquility. In any case, if you are in trouble, think of me, I will be there with you. This was the promise she gave and she kept that promise. As I further continued doing this, um, the there were some bad experiences of demons and stuff like that. But then I, I used to think of Father Goddess and she was there smiling and was happy and no problem. So that way it continued and she became my first mentor. The question was, like God is worshipping and teaching Tantra, Guruji started with his own experience uh, when he started doing meditation. Saraswati became a mentor and she started giving experiences, like giving me books to read. Uh, and I would read them. At that time, I became a member of the Bombay University Library. And I used to go to the library and I would pick up the same book that I read in my, my, my meditation earlier. So this was very strange to me, being a scientist. And I used to ask myself, how is it that I am able to read something which I have not read before, with them um, eyes closed in my meditation. So that shattered some of my expectations of rationality in the behavior of the infinity. I expected everything to be rational, that doesn't seem to be working out. So then she became a mentor, and uh, apart from this uh, questioning the roots of my the scientific, totally scientific explanation of the cosmos. I started uh, taking her help more and more, and she used to take me for a walk with me catching like a little child on her finger and walking with the rainbows and stuff like that. A beautiful, beautiful time I had with Saraswati. Then she would uh, sit and play with on Vena for hours together, and I would watch that. And once I had a strange vision, but as she was praying on the Veena, my head was uh, exchanged with her head and I was praying on the Veena and then I asked her what is the meaning of this. And she says you are a Saraswati. She said you are going to Amrita on the Saraswati. So that is the, that's how I got that name uh, given by her. Amrita was the name given by my Guru, Saraswati was the name added by her. It belonged to Saraswati tradition. And after this uh, she was my mentor. Then I went to Balaji temple, I had experience of the goddess uh, during around that time. Then I was working in the defense area, I left the defense area, went to, for, to Zambia to look for other opportunities, a teaching uh, position in the quantum dynamics and relativity theory. I taught for two years, came back, and they would not renew my contract because um, there was a racist professor there, head of the department, and he would not uh, allow me to continue. So I came back. And uh, I wanted to go back to pure physics, but uh, the office would not allow me. They said, you are using the defense work, it's important, we cannot allow you to go back to pure physics. I said, to hell with you, I'll resign my job and walk away. So I don't have pension. I didn't have anything. I had three dollars to ma manage to get married and I had total reliance on the goddess because I had experience with the goddess already. And then I 
I used to see visions of the the temples that uh, I had to build, and uh, these visions of Sri Chakra temples with various architectures. And uh, she used to say, "Will you build this? Will you build this?" I found the simplest one, and I think I said, "I, I may try to build this." And then. At the time I went to my guru in Alkapalli and told him, look, this is what is happening. I am being asked to build this temple and uh, uh, he said, don't even go near that. It's uh, dangerous. It is dangerous because um, it's a huge project and you may not be able to manage it. Second time again she prodded me, I went. Third time she prodded me, I said, no, she is telling me to give you the um, permission, so what can I do? He gave me his permission. He said, not only I am not only giving you permission, but all, all tapas I have given, I am giving it to you, so you can continue and finish that job. So that's how this, the beginning of the temple was made. And uh, where do I cite the temple? So we performed a yajna according to direction in Vaisak, and uh, 108 people, Ritwik, participated in the yajna for 14 days. At the time, three acres of land were donated there, the temple exists now. And, and at this place where I, um, the site was donated, I think it was her own uh, choice of the site. I was looking for confirmation that this was indeed a site designed for uh, uh, making a temple according to her wish. And then I discovered Kamakya, even a And I started uh, sitting there and meditating on the Kamakya. Uh, temple. Then again, for it, any time that I would go, I would feel happy. So I would uh, go straight away into meditation. It's a triangular pit in a rock formation, which is rather roundish. A little elevation design that said it resembles thighs in the central portion, like a yoni. I used to sit there on thigh and meditate on the, on the formation there. Then again, two, three days, uh, it was 12, 12, 12 o'clock in the noon, and then nothing, it was hot sun beating down, but it was, it was cool at that time. And I uh, was in a trance like state. I heard uh, the sound of uh, jingles of the anklets, and I opened my eyes and I saw a, a light coming out from my heart and condensing itself into an iridescent form made out of electric, uh, small, small electric lightning. The surface of the entire body was made out of electric lightnings. And she said, incredibly beautiful and uh, shining like a jewel. And she said, will you do puja to me? I said, yes, of course, but I would, uh, I'm the happiest man to do the puja to you, but I have nothing here, not even a, a drop of water to do, offer you. How will I do the puja to you? I only know the Shodasha Upachara puja. And I can do that, but I have no nothing. Hey, don't worry about that. You think of them, they'll come. So like that I started doing the puja. Then she did a strange thing. She removed her uh, ornaments, which are her, her only clothes at the time, because in the olden days the, the before the fiber was invented, cotton fiber weaving was invented. They, they used to wear leaves and uh, and ornaments and, uh, and goddesses they used to usually wear ornaments. I was used to seeing the nude forms of the goddess in my meditation. So that was nothing very strange. But what was strange was that she bowed down to my feet and I asked her, what, did, what does it mean? She said, and the world, and you are going to be a guru. The world is going to bow on the feet of the guru. So the meaning of that. And she asked me to do the, the puja, which I did with her help. Uh, I would imagine something, it would be there. And the time of uh, giving her a bath, I asked for water. And there was a cloud gathering on the on top of the two of us and it burst and we had a shower. So then she took me to the place where the present Sri Chakra temple is to be built. At the time this is the place, you must put the foundation stone. Then we came back, I finished the puja. She said, I am Kamakya Devi. 
And I used to be worship in the tantric way earlier. I'm missing it now. And I wanted to come back into this uh, present age because the present age needs that. The expression of uh, your own hood is being suppressed. And a lot of sense and sense of shame and guilt associated with the private parts of a woman that need to be removed. So that uh, healing at a deep level can take place. The psyche will not be disturbed if that healing takes place at the first two chakras. They are important. She, she said, I'll send you people who will come specifically for the Yoni Puja and you can do the Kalavahana to them and do all the, the mantras that are used in the Puja empower them as uh, all the chakras and then especially the Svaishthana and Modhara chakras and do puja to them. You must associate the feeling of uh, purity and empowerment with the um, puja to private parts but not the sense of guilt and shame. This has to be removed. I said, okay. Then she told me you have to build this temple as a the Sri Chakra, a three dimensional Sri Chakra with all the Kadgamala deities, which I did. So this was the phase of construction which lasted, I started in, in 1983 and would complete by 94. It took me 11 years to build. And during the entire time, the goddess Kamakya was with me. I used to feel her around me, embracing me. I used to feel her passionate play with me and if somebody is there around, that feeling would disappear, but when I'm alone, it would come back. And I used to wonder, what is happening to me? Am I being attacked by Kamva Pishachi or something? But there was one difference. I knew it was not that. The reason, of course, because I had an experience at Kamakya. The second thing is, Mm. A calm Vishaji would not be happy if you held back your seed. And she would never allow me my seed to be expressed. That was the difference, for, 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 which convinced me that it is not it's not just karma alone. Of course, karma is an important part. It is being used to generate the energy there and transform it upwards towards love and uh, mm, the feminine uh, power of uh, gratitude, of kindness, compassion, and stuff like that. That is the source. So it, she's generating the energy, but she's trying to transform the energy. I understood that. So then during the entire uh, period of her, uh, she was my mentor, second mentor. And in between these two, there was Radhani, the love power of Krishna, which came to me. That was my mentor also. I had three mentors, Saraswati, then Radhani, the love power of Krishna, that's called Radha, and third was Kamakya. And after I finished the temple in 1994, and then um, I start, I had to start interacting with more and more people, and she started going more and more away from me. I was feeling a, a great sadness in me, because I'm not able to converse with her, I'm not able to see her as frequently as, or as much as I would like. But she started telling me, no, all this time you're experiencing that I'm different from you. Now know that I am not different from you and don't ask me questions. Ask yourself the question and answer yourself because I am not different from you. When you are asking the question, you are you. And you are answering the question, you are me. There is no distinction. So learn to see me in everyone that you see. So this was the final instruction given by her. And Now, I often wonder what is it that exactly happened at Kamakya? Was it a real experience? Was it a trance? Was it a hallucination? One thing that is absolutely true is that I had the experience, not only then, but for 11 years afterwards. That's a fact that I, uh, nobody, even a hundred thousand people come and tell me that you did not experience it, I would deny that. Like, for example, in that great movie, Contact, 
that Jodie Foster um, says. She speaks everything in spiritual terms, but finally when she asks the question, um, do you believe in God? She says, I can't. So like that, I can't disprove the, the thing because it was true to me. What is true to me, I believe in. And uh, many of the millions of people say, no, I have to be true to my heart. It could have been a trance. It could have been a, a very lucid dream. I do not deny that. But it, it, to me, it was a, an open-eyed experience. That's all I can say. And anything more than that, mm, well, uh, you will not believe me unless you are able to get into my experience, get into me. If you do Parakaya Pravashim to me and go back to that time, maybe you'll see that it is uh, true for you. I cannot prove it. Proof is not uh, required um, for a direct experience. If it is a, you have to prove, you have to prove something if it is uh, false. If it is true, it doesn't need proof. Reality does not need proof. Unreality needs proof. Since it's reality to me, I don't need to prove it to anybody. That is the stand I take now. Then uh, that's my spiritual awakening in, through meditation, through listening to the sound of Anahata, getting the help of the mentors, Saraswati, Anadhani and Kamakya. And, uh, Having built the, the temple, Sahasrakshi is a temple that we have consecrated and it's not the same level as Kamakya. Kamakya is direct to me. But Sahasrakshi is personal to all the other people. Sahasrakshi, perhaps you can say, is the child of Kamakya, but is the mother of the universe. She is directly experienceable by all people, but Kamakya is not experienceable by other people like I had experienced her. That's what I can say. This is regarding my experiences. Spirituality is a direct experience of, of something far greater than yourself. Filled with wonder, absolute wonder. Uh, there can never be a question of uh, doubting that, even for the smallest, uh, a minutest amount of time, because it's so true to me. So, there is another unique thing in it, apart from all these spiritual experiences and your outlook, how you look at the world. Uh, so and definitely it is again it is manifested through your works I mean uh, say for example how you build the temple temple is a place of wonder it's a very rare I, I would say and uh, apart from the biggest three chakra temple there are many nude goddesses so you just spoke that you used to see nude goddesses through your dreams and you just created them in human, meditation yes not dreams meditation meditations mm. And you just created them. So, uh, what is your idea? I mean, uh, I would like to say to do it. my direct question is that how people reacted towards it when you first built it? Because you were doing it in this age, and uh, though people know or they are ever about the Khajura Ho and other other temple and caves and all those kind of sculptures, but it is very new to them. Someone who is living in the present age, I mean, a, a contemporary scientist he is building this kind of temple so what was the reactions the reaction was totally negative initially they said this fellow is a gone case is a, is trying to spoil the world you should be put behind the bars this was the first reaction of many people very few people said here is a brave man who is prepared to show himself what he is. Even if he is a mad, living man, still, still he is able to be brave enough to show that uh, he believes in these things. But over a period of time, um, and when the TV people used to come and interview me, they are very negative. So, you're, you're, uh, how can you prove that you are not spoiling the country? 
the younger generation, how can they take it? They are going to uh, lose their uh, seed when they come and watch these things. Do you think this is proper? I used to answer them to the best of my ability. Yes, it does have uh, when uh, everything is closed and you find something new, which is uh, natural, and uh, there are some uh, reactions that are going to be there, and that's, not, that's to be expected. Mm. A feminine who has dress and is removing the dress is far more uh, exciting than to see a woman in the nude all the time. So, some, sometimes the young students used to come, they used to go around looking for uh, pornographic uh, things and they would not find the pornography there but they found beauty and they found aesthetics in that. They would go run from one uh, island to another to find something more mm. but they would all find, they would find the same thing, two spheres and a, and a, a slit two inches wide, uh, two inches long. That's all they found. And they, and they used to ask questions, hey, to see these things we have come all the way? And they would go and tell their friends, look, here's a, a pornographic temple, let's go and watch it. It's higher and a, and a consciousness and awareness which is beyond these limits. And the acceptance of that is the, the idea that you, they, are, they are pure shiktis. Actually, they are your own shiktis, your own powers, which are in the raw and nude form. Means and spreading out over there. You are not aware that they are your words, and so you think they are different from you. And it's because you are thinking they are different from you, you are accepting, you are feeling the sense of shame. If uh, I used to give an example, supposing you take a, a soap and uh, go to the bathroom and uh, rub yourself all over your body mm-hmm. when taking bath, uh, are you ashamed that your hand is coming and uh, rubbing all over your body? No, why not? Because it's a part of you. So if you if you are able to see that that uh, power is a part of you, then neither the power is ashamed of uh, yours being yours, or you are ashamed of owning them. So this is the they, they are your own powers. You are not realizing them, but once you realize that they are your powers, then they become yours. And the function of this temple is different from the other functions. For example, one way you can say, you know, all, most other temples, all the sculptures are far away, you can't see, you can't touch, you can't handle. But here is such a, here is a place where you can actually go touch them, feel them, and uh, so become familiar with them. You are actually walking hand to hand and shaking hands with the gods and goddesses here. That is one speciality. They are not far away in the towers and uh, an inaccessible place, but they are accessible to you. Accessibility is the important uh, part here. So, uh, there used to be a lot of this opposition. Mm -hmm. And over time, as the people started understanding, the criticism became less and less and less, and acceptance became more and more and more. Nowadays, about 99% of the people who come there come with a sense of uh, prayer and accepting that this is a, a true feeling. It's not a, um, just a other pornographic uh, sight. But there is uh, lots of, uh, especially for foreign people who come there, how beautiful. We thought it was pornography, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual place. People are accepting that idea that the spirit can be free, can be pervasive, can uh, occupy the whole of uh, space and time, and it cannot be bound by anything. The unbounded um, nature of the spirit is what is being expressed by it. So people are understanding this principle, and I think it is it, a uh, positive value. Another, thing, another example I used to give is, okay, you take all this trouble, this record, all this in good sastrakshi. What do you do there? You go and do a namaskaram. That one single namaskaram that you have done after looking at all these things with passion, that is going to change the starting point of your change. It is true. Because next time they bring their uh, partner, they go around with them. Third time they go around. And fourth time, 
the girl sits somewhere and do meditation and ask them to go around. If they want to close their eyes and sit in the temple, what happened to their passion? That passion has replaced into a self-love, a flowing of self-love towards themselves. That was the intended transformation. So you had to go through this negativity and towards positivity. Negativity is where you are. You cannot start from a place where you are not. So this was the, the transfer. And it, now I think that people are accepting. Of course, we had um, in North India, there are so many Muslim invasions and the Christian invasions. And uh, all the Christians came and did business with India and then they made it their own. Muslims um, tied to. So they, they did not understand these concepts. They always uh, dwelled in duality. They always pursued the Father God. They would never accept the Mother God. And uh, but the Mother is... Uh, uh, motherly qualities are really needed for this present uh, generation. And uh, qualities of uh, creativity, procreativity, nourishment, protection, and grace, uh, abundance, and love, um, and teaching, and compassion, all these things are feminine quality, qualities. We don't, we have enough of aggressive uh, nature fighting and uh, trying to be aggressive. I think that that can uh, hold back a little until the, the feminine uh, graceful qual qualities uh, show up. I think that's the transformation that's happening not only in the, in the, in the nucleus for these things, but there's so many other nuclei. Everywhere in the world people are realizing, all the feminist movements are accepting this idea that God could be a woman.